welcome back to my channel guys and in the last video we looked at connectors to create the first step of integration of this package now in this video we are going to look at how to create a request class why to create it first of all right and then actually making an api call to the json placeholder fake rest api to fetch some data points so let's get started now i have my connector ready where i have defined the base url and nothing else now i'll go to my command line and i will look at the commands which are available for this package and i'll use this request create us alone request class so let's understand what are the different parameters which are required for this class to get created through the cli it requires the related integration which basically means our integration name over here is json placeholder api i'll copy that and the name of the request which obviously makes sense i'll need that name so first i pass the integration and i say my request name is get user list okay so as you can see inside our integrations folder we already had this and inside that there is a request folder and then the class let's go inside our vs code and get a sense that yes then this is how things are we have this class as we can see it extends the request class it has defined a method which is method get which basically tells me that this request is by default an http get request if i want to make it post i should have the ability to do that which is fine right now we are not doing it and then there is the resolve endpoint obviously because that request needs to go somewhere and that somewhere will be in our case um slash users makes sense so we'll do this hit save now the basic request class is ready to get executed but how do we do that why don't we go a little ahead of time and see how to send request so to get started we first create an instance of the connector which is dollar forge in this example i can pass anything in the constructor if i want to like the api token is being passed over here and then i create an instance of the request then the response is connector dot send which basically means that the connector has a send method and i'm passing the request so the send method of the connector would take that request and it would understand what it needs to do it will understand what is the method which url to hit stuff like that which makes sense so we will start by going into the roots file and connector I'll call this as connector and new JSON placeholder. I think it's JSON placeholder API. Okay, no, it's JSON placeholder. Fair enough. Let me just click through this and yes, this is the connector. So I have an instance of this and I can do response equals connector send new get user list okay why don't we then just dump the response and see what we are getting okay so we are getting a psr response from gazelle and this is what we have it says 404 which is a bit odd get user list 
yes it's users so now it should not give me a 404 right it's a 200 status okay which means I, i'm getting something but we are not able to see the data as of now will i get it in the stream no i don't what i can do is come over here and call the body method and now i get the entire body which is exactly same as this but now mm, this is just the string i mean i can do a json parse and all those things but this package gives us the ability to execute a json method and if we do that we get the array because now laravel is able to json parse that particular data and to be very honest right we will most of the time get that so you know why even worry about it so we are getting the json data laravel understands the array i mean understands the json and when it is giving me the response it is giving me the array for me to get through the information right so this is good um let's go back to our request we can obviously we saw the resolve endpoint i can do quite a few things right now if i want to send arguments and the question is why would i want to send the arguments right well let's understand a use case i have users slash one so let's say the requirement is that if i don't pass an id then i am requesting for all but if i'm passing the id i'm expecting that particular user right so i can do that in this request in a way that let's first add a constructor public function construct okay um, and then i will have a private variable which is of type int dollar id but this id is optional so i will do something like this and this because if i don't add this thing you know, it will complain because you know int null is not an int and if i do this now it should work that's the part of the type hinting and it is also not complaining because i haven't passed any argument so with this additional change ideally nothing should break and we are getting all the users but then how do i get that one user well let me pass that argument i can do id equals one or i can directly pass one both are fine but because we are using the hintings i mean we are passing the types this one just makes sense and obviously now we are going to get the id i can show you this id right we do get that but the only thing which i'll need to know uh, do is let's say the url is this but if this id uh, what is that one liner thing um, i think it's something like this i'm i'm still trying to figure out those you know, nitty gritties uh, so url equals if id um okay i'll do this if that is the case uh will it be and and this i mean javascript works this way so let me try and do that um url equals dollar url dot and then i'll have a slash and then dollar this url oh sorry id and in the end what i'm giving away is this so let's see 
Right. So this is working because I passed this. And what if I do null? It gives me all. And if I don't pass anything, then also it is giving me the entire list. So this is how you are able to pass some default arguments. And then inside your request, you can have your entire business logic. And the beauty of this package is that you, know, you are easily able to kind of remove all the business logic around making an API call inside a class and your application just does this two lines of code. And that's about it, right? That's how easy it is and how nicely you can architect your application code when you are interacting with third party APIs. And this is true for not even just you know, any, you know, like the faker or those kind of things, even your payment gateways, right? If you are doing it, Algolia for that matter, if you are using that, it, it's a beautiful thing because most of these third party APIs will need some kind of authentication token. So you have some secret API, which you can put it in your connector and you know, all these kind of business logics can be easily executed there, right? That's the beauty. So the last thing that I want to show you in the request is this default config, okay, uh, rather default query, which can be help helpful in some situations. For example, if I look at this example of fake JSON placeholder, where they have comments, question mark, post ID equals something. So let's understand that URL. If I do comments, I get all the comments and for some time, we will also change this. Okay, so I'm not sending anything right now. Although it's a get user list, but we are right now calling the comments API. So I am, I was getting 10 users and now I get all the comments because there are quite a few comments over here, 500 comments to be precise. And then there, um, API says that if I pass the post ID as an argument, then it will give me that. So I'll do one thing. I'll come over here, send this as, uh, what is their argument? Post ID. Correct. So that is one. And now from that 500, I have reduced this to a different value. Why? Because now the default arguments or the default query is being passed by this request. So as you can see, there are quite a few things which you can play around with. It's a very powerful library and I really like the way this architecture is handled. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.